Hello and welcome to Soul Love with Kimness. I am Kim van der Zanden, your host, and I'm super excited to share another episode of Soul Love with you, where we share inspirational and empowering stories from the heart. We talk about the beauty and the shadows as both are part of the ascension journey, to remind you that you are powerful, you are magical, and to have trust in what you feel to be true deep within. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Before we start the next Soul Love conversation, I want to invite you to check out my amazing book, Activating the Flower of Love, a sacred guide for manifesting your deepest desires and highest calling. This sacred book filled with powerful tools and activations will guide you to open your heart to the beauty and wisdom within you, empowering you to create the life you deeply desire from the foundation of love. You can find Activating the Flower of Love in all the major online and offline bookstores in ebook or paperback, or you can check it out through my website, kimnes.nl, where you can also discover the different ways of working with me and the latest updates on new starting programs. Enjoy this next episode of Soul Love. Welcome, beautiful souls, to a new episode of Soul Love. And today I have the honor to share a sacred, beautiful conversation with Michelle Phillips. And I welcome you within this sacred space. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes, it's really a blessing. And I'm always uh, excited to share these beautiful conversations. And we already had a short conversation before, but I love your energy and what you're bringing into the world. And I always love to start with the question, like what sparked for you? And I know you've been on this journey for for many years and you have many powerful moments, but maybe there's one you would like to share now to open the conversation and see. Um, Like I was sharing with you, when my son left this world. Yes. Um, almost six years ago. Uh, I want to share that in just a minute, but my whole life has been spiritual. I mean, from a young age, you know, I always knew that God was my real parents. Mm -hmm. I used to lay in bed at night and cry, mommy, daddy, let me come home. And I felt like I was being punished because I had to be down here. And in my life, the only thing that I was ever curious about was spirituality. You know, Mm -hmm. other people are curious. And so from the age of like, three, I knew I'd lived before. So for me, researching that was always, you know, my connection. And the researching it was always from within, Mm -hmm. you know, spirit would come in Jesus, I always say is my main man, not through church or religion. He's just always been with me. And he's taught me my work. Yeah, I think it's really been an amazing journey here. Yeah, but I love that you already at a young age, but we're so intuitive, connected still then, but it's within. Instead yeah. of like the connection is there or God source, Jesus, it's out mm-hmm. there. I know it's within you and from within it's guiding you in beautiful ways and supporting you. So, yeah. Yes. If we allow ourselves to yes. really listen and I just find so many of us and others are just so intuitive and yeah. yet they don't follow what they're feeling. It's like mm-hmm. they, they don't have an understanding of it. Yeah. So as we clear out who we're not, we're just open to really be at one with spirit. Yeah. So I started my spiritual work many years ago doing inner child work mm-hmm. as Jesus, like I said, my team had guided me yeah. and I was guided to this holistic health college and I didn't want to go. And, you know, Jesus said, go enroll. I said, I don't have any money. He said, go enroll. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then my mother offered to pay my way. And my mother and I had really had some challenging times. But for there, I started working on my own stuff, clearing a lot of my own stuff out. Yeah. And then I could connect to people's bodies. And I thought, I don't want to do massage. But then I could see inside people's bodies. And I could see inside the second chakra. And I could see what it was like when they were in the mother's womb, where they started picking up their belief systems and patterns, Mm -hmm. what it was like before they came down here. And from that, I mean, I really started healing myself. It Mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. 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 But I I love as you shared, like you got the guidance of just follow it. But I'm also curious in a way, what, what, um, how you made sure that your channel stayed open or that this connection stayed open because a lot of us like while growing up we we forgot or we were so yeah mm-hmm. uh, in, in a way our parents or society or while bringing up it was like we were mm-hmm. you know 
guided to disconnect from this part in ourselves. Well, I just had a secret life, a world inside. I was always with God and Jesus, my team. And of course, my family, you know, thought I was pretty crazy out there. Mm -hmm. And they still do, but we love each other. You know, so um, (laughs) So my world, because my childhood was like many people's childhood, mm-hmm. you know, I used, to, I used to say, oh, I had a really hard childhood. And now I say I had a normal childhood, you know, mm-hmm. because I believe that childhood is everything we go through in this lifetime we've agreed to go through. Yeah. So until you really heal that part of yourself, it's challenging to go forward. It's like you have the higher aspect of you going forward Mm -hmm. and then you're dragging all this old hurt emotional stuff with you yeah Yeah. so i always had the secret life inside myself Mm -hmm. was spirit yeah Yeah. and i think because from a young age jesus or jeshua has always been with me i could feel the vibration and the frequency and he would communicate with me just like he's communicate like i'm communicating with you Mm -hmm. and i could see him in front of me so i always had the frequency, knowing the frequency of God and Jesus and, and my spiritual team. I love that. Yeah, and that I, I get when it's such a clear vision, it keeps open. But also, like mm-hmm. you, you said, a secret life. But it almost, for me, as you shared, I felt like it's a sacred life. So you, you mm-hmm. it's almost like in ancient times where there were these sacred teachings in temples. Like you mm-hmm. had your, your temple space, your house, where you would, com- your, your body, where you would communicate with your mm-hmm. spirit light. Like almost making sure that this part would stay sacred would stay safe so that you could step into your mission as you're doing now and have done for many years but i think it's beautiful how yeah Yeah. you guide it in that way even though life was challenging and even though you had a a normal life then yeah yes Yeah. yeah Yeah. um because when i was growing up i mean now children are coming through they're just so amazing incredible children you know but when i was growing up not so much you know, being yeah. as sensitive as I was. And so, mm-hmm. like you said, the sacredness of it, like just being inside myself with spirit, that was a safe place for me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then a beautiful course of doing the inner child work opened you up yeah. to express that even then again, more into the world. And yeah. And then I'm doing inner child work with others. And then, um, I just started taking people into past lives. It just happened. It wasn't something, okay, I'm going to do past life work. Yeah. And so people ask me who I studied with on the earth. Mm-hmm. And I say, Jesus, but no, on the earth, Jesus, you know, he's taught me everything. Yes. So I just started doing past life work with people and it was amazing. So one of my specialties, I want to say, is past life. And I, and it's not to say, you know, oh, well, I've been the king of England or whatever, mm-hmm. it's to find the patterns back there that are controlling us in this lifetime, mm-hmm. changes people's life, it opens yeah. them up. Yeah. And so the more we clear out who we're not, the more room we have to really connect to the higher aspects of mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah. And as we know, I mean, in ancient times or whatever, women were persecuted or beheaded or witches. I mean, and yeah. all the war and all that kind of stuff. So as we go back in to clear it out for people to pass life energy and then do soul retrieval, bring the aspects of them mm-hmm. that were stuck there back into the now, it just changes the patterns of what they're going through in this lifetime. Yeah. And I work with a lot of people and you know, so I don't know who they are and spirits bringing these lifetimes. I go, oh, my God, that's the pattern. That's what I'm going through now or have been going through. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's an important understanding as well, because like sometimes we're trying to fix something in this reality, but mm-hmm. uh, the root is not even in this reality. Sometimes it's in past lifetimes or different dimensions. And then we can right. do all our best and we can put all the effort in it, but somehow mm-hmm. the patterns aren't changing and aren't. So I think that's a, a beautiful awareness because sometimes we can also beat ourselves up. Like, okay, what am I still doing wrong? Or what am I? Right. Yeah. And again, it's coming to this place of compassion and, and, and seeing mm-hmm. it from this broader perspective where we can really see like, okay, like we have been maybe having this pattern with us for many lifetimes. And it's right. It's like, a, I think I shared a couple of podcasts about, but it's like healing on, on the multidimensional levels and understanding that we're yeah. not only this physical body, we're not only this physical lifetime, but we are so much more. And I love as you shared, because that's mm-hmm. important. I think for all of us, we're being invited to do the healing on all the dimensions and all the... Right. Yeah, we're, we're definitely multidimensional beings. Yes. And what I have found... Um, collectively what we're doing now we're Mm -hmm. moving out of the collective karmic stuff 
and into who we are collectively in the higher aspects of ourselves now. Yeah. Yes. So Imagine. years ago, years yeah. ago, I used to channel this being called White Lily, and Jesus is the one that brought her to me. Mm -hmm. And we were doing inner child work and a lot of work together and in classes and all this. And then, um, you know, I was asked by spirit to integrate with her so mm -hmm. I could reach a larger audience. So this was like 30 years ago or so, you know. And so when we did that, I realized I was channeling myself from a higher dimension. Oh, wow. So we yes. have so many aspects of ourselves that are just yes. waiting to come through now or waiting to integrate with us. Um, so the more we clear out who we're not, the more room we have to connect to the highest aspects of ourselves. Yeah, I love that. But I think it's also beautiful that your high, the high, higher aspect of yourself steps forward to support you in this in this earthly journey and to bring even more harmony and inner peace. And yeah, I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I feel, what, feel we're integrating now with our higher self. So it's not us down here and God and spirit or whatever there. Um, we are. Yeah. Just opening up and becoming one with it. Yeah, it is. But that's also, that's what I know to my own journey and others. It's like, but it's it's a descending of our higher selves. But it also means that we're we're sometimes being invited to feel more because we're descending not only in the higher realm, but it's really our light coming into our physicality. So that also means that everything that is of dense energy in our bodies, in our fields is being activated to be harmonized, to be loved. And sometimes mm -hmm. we can feel like in this journey, what am I doing wrong? But you're not doing anything wrong. This is the journey. Like you, your light descending into your body. Descending, so yeah. Um... It, it, it also vibrates everything loose that is out of alignment with this light. And that can create a lot of like for our mind, a lot of like emotions that suddenly stir mm -hmm. up or maybe physical things in our body start to shift or yeah, because we're mm -hmm. upgrading, we're elevating. and Absolutely we are. Yeah. Anytime our light is turned up, like, like you're saying, when we go through something emotionally, it's like, yeah. for me, it's like a circle within circle, just all these completions. Yeah. And every time our light is turned up, it's going to activate anything else that needs to be healed or cleared. And yeah. I, I think when we understand this, I mean, it's still when we're going through the emotions, it's not easy. But yeah. having an understanding of it makes it a lot easier to cycle through it. It is. Yeah, we can. Really, yeah. yeah. And to know that everyone that comes in our life that triggers us mm -hmm. has been with us before and it's triggering us something that needs to be healed or cleared out. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the awareness so makes sure we can be compassionate with ourselves absolutely and, uh, and in that and we... with others <laughs> yes as well that's an yeah. important key as well yes. you no know, okay i you know i i believe we choose the lifetime before we come down we choose yes. who we're going to be with and um so really knowing that everyone in our life we've been with before so mm -hmm. they're just mirroring something and many times, like from other time frames, lifetimes, past lives. And the creator says, this is a lifetime we've agreed to come full circle. Mm -hmm. So anything that's happening in this lifetime has a frame of reference elsewhere. Yeah. So when you understand it, you can go yeah. back yeah, and clear it out. So, yeah. And we have so many gifts that are just waiting to be downloaded in us. Mm -hmm. um, so I was talking to you earlier about my first book, like I've done five books. The first book, The Creator Speaks, mm -hmm. came through me and I'm a channel and I just started automatic writing and I knew it was from the creator, but I didn't know what I was writing until mm -hmm. after the first day. And I went, oh my God, and I'm dyslexic, so I don't even read much. Mm -hmm. So when this started coming through me, I'm thinking, you must be kidding. Yeah. But, and then every day I would sit down and more information would come through. Um but the book was so far ahead of its time. And now it's what people are talking about here. But yeah. as I'm saying this, it's just to let people know we're, we're so much more than we think or know that we are here. Mm -hmm. And as we get out of our own way, spirit's going to guide us or direct us into the next step of our soul's journey. Because mm -hmm. they always say to me, we can't do this without you. And you can't do it without us. We're all on the same team here. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And and it's being in the openness. Like th that's what I love as you shared, like you were open to just receive and in that whole book came through and yeah, but it's understanding that when it's the line time, it just flows effortlessly, but it's, yes. it's not in the contraction mm -hmm. of the mind or wanting things to be a certain way. You were just present mm -hmm. and in that you were able to receive, mm -hmm. and create in a beautiful way and bring forth these codes. And yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey. And then the hardest thing in my life was losing my son. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost, I want to say a lot of the human aspect of what we had together. Um, that's still so much in my heart. We were very mm-hmm. close, you know, and he would call me, hey, mama, just called to tell you I love you, you know. Mm-hmm. But we had the same consciousness. And then when he passed, it was um, six years ago next month. Mm-hmm. Mother Mary came to me. Mm-hmm. And helped me. I mean, I was just heartbroken. And she said, I know what it's like to lose a son. She says, I lost mine. Mm-hmm. And I got the name of a book that Frank, my son, and I were going to do together. It was Surfing Through Heaven's Doorways. Mm-hmm. And because he was a surfer, he lived in Hawaii. The ocean was his life. Yeah. So then he and I did this book together. Because after he passed, spirit started taking me into the higher dimensions and going through the review room. I mean, just everything we do Mm -hmm. when we leave this lifetime. And so Frank works with me and he immediately started working with me Mm -hmm. because I was in Sweden. Um, I went back to Sweden on my tour and I didn't know if I was going to get through it, even with what I have an understanding spiritually or whatever. Um, But he would immediately, in my workshops, people could see him. I could see him standing next to me. I'd take people through a process and they'd say, well, Frank said, and I went, what? (laughs) So (laughs) So the book we did together, um, Jesus was taking me into the higher dimensions. And I was sitting with Frank and Jesus and we were overlooking We'd be looking at the ocean, but like waves of light. It was beautiful. And then I could see all these crystals. And Jeshua said to me, see those crystals? That's the earth that's waking up. That's all the souls on the earth right now that are waking up spiritually. And then he would take me back there and show me more and more crystals. And now what they show me is just huge. Because the collective consciousness in our world, Mm -hmm. the awakening that's happening is incredible. And I feel like because there's so much light that's opening up here, it's activated the shadow within ourselves and the collective shadow Mm -hmm. that we see playing out in the world right now. But I really believe what spirit is showing me, telling me um, we're already through it in the higher dimensions. We just have to hold on and become one the light with each other you know Mm -hmm. hold on each other as we ascend into what people are calling the new world the new earth but what the creator is saying to me is beyond the beyond beyond any story and Mm -hmm. just into the oneness from which we're first created because spirit i mean we call ourselves souls but the creator has shown me we're actually cells Mm -hmm. of consciousness And so what's happening, our cells are drawing each other back together now. So it's a challenging time, but it's an amazing time to be here. And one we signed up for. So it's exciting. At the same time, it's challenging, dramatic. I mean, all of it. Yes, it is. Yeah. We already shared before we started this conversation. It is the part that we signed up for it. And it doesn't mean like it's always need to be like, okay, we are going through this, but we can uh, be a little bit more compassionate and understanding that as we realize within ourselves, we also bring that forward in the collective. I think that's, Mm -hmm. I I love as you shared, like also the cells, we're one collective cell, but it's really Mm -hmm. in a deeper way, understanding the impact we Mm -hmm. can make by by being compassionate and loving towards ourselves and others, but mm-hmm. how, well, what kind of waves that created? Sometimes we can so dim, dim ourselves by saying, okay, who, what, what, what does it matter? Or But it's understanding that as we shift that mm-hmm. perspective and as we really come to this inner oneness and wholeness, how that helps the whole the whole field. So I think that's, uh, yeah, it's really uh, the empowering journey we are all on to be the contribution yeah. by just, yeah. Embracing. And just like the cells within us interact and communicate with each other. Yes. So the oneness, we are the cells of each other. Yeah. And it's really important to remember that. And it's easy sometimes to forget it as we get caught up in all the emotions here. Yeah. And to really know that everyone in our life that triggers us, again, we've been with them before somewhere. Yes. And to see the gift of it. Okay. What is it inside of me now that needs to be healed? And to have compassion for the other person, which sometimes can be challenging to yes. do. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but it's in the end also understanding that in a way we both signed up for it. And in the, in the end, they're giving us a gift because they're mirroring a part of ourselves we maybe not be aware of. And as you Absolutely. Shared, I love as you shared also the patterns of past lifetimes that are now coming to a completion. So mm -hmm. when you get triggered, it means like, okay, I, I suddenly become, can become aware of this pattern that mm -hmm. is in my field without me before being aware of it. So now Absolutely. it's rising up in my consciousness and I have an opportunity to mm -hmm. harmonize it and bring it into oneness and wholeness. And so it no longer affects my future. And I think for a lot of Absolutely. us, it's understanding we're doing really powerful work and it's really yeah. like we're harmonizing cycles of sometimes many, many lifetimes. Absolutely. Again, coming back to and compassion a lot. All yes. at the same well. time. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, but what 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 are ways to, that you support yourself as you notice when a shadow aspect comes up, or you notice a shadow aspect of the collective that is being purified and harmonized? What are like also things you, you can do to see us? the shadow now <laughs> in our world? Yeah. Um, yeah, like within myself, and and I'd like to take us through this little um, process that takes like a minute and a half or whatever. Yeah. Um, I can always feel, like I said, if it's the highest aspect of myself and if someone triggers something, then I know, okay, I, again, it needs to be healed. And mm -hmm. then I feel like so much of our patterns are from this lifetime, the childhood, because mm -hmm. a childhood, there's nothing there that's not connected someplace else because this is a lifetime we've agreed come full circle. So within me, I just go within myself and really ask, okay, show me where this is, where is it inside of me? And mm -hmm. if you ask, it's going to be shown. Maybe you won't get it right away, but if you ask, it's going to come up. And it's really important to heal the children inside of us. I say children because um, what Jeshua has shown me, we all have a little girl and a little boy where people that do inner child work, well, like if you're a female, you'll just work with the little girl. But the little girls, the feminine, the knowing, the creative, the intuitive, the little boys, the intellect, the ego, the will, the part that goes forward in life. So we need to bring them both together then. Mm -hmm. And that balance then becomes, starts from the balance of the male and female when we were first conceived, when you start the inner child work. Mm -hmm. So as you communicate with your inner children, they will also tell you, this is what's going on. This is what's happening here. Because they're the ones that are experiencing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. But also the understanding again, how all these experiences relate to different lifetimes. But it's I love as you share, because I think in, in essence, as it, just in general, we're all being invited also to communicate more with our bodies, with ourselves, with every part Absolutely. of us. It's like, and when we ask yeah. a question, it 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 answers. Or, But it's it like, does, this yeah. is a huge intuitive channel, our body. But it somehow is. we haven't been learned to, to listen mm -hmm. to its messages, but like it's our soul communicating through us. It it's God, source, Absolutely. infinite oneness, giving our messages about what is aligned and what is not, and what needs attention and what needs love and what needs, yeah. So I and think just look at how many lifetimes i mean everything that this body is carrying from yeah. the beginning time of our separation of the belief of separation from the mm -hmm. oneness i mean it's amazing the information that's within us in yeah. ourselves and our dna um so i started doing dna work many years ago after mm -hmm. i was diagnosed with cancer Mm -hmm. And I started looking at like who in my life has had the health issues I've had because I had a lot of them when I was younger and I could see it was my father. So I just thought intuitively, I'm going to go into his DNA. And mm -hmm. when I did, I was blown away. I mean, although we know we um, are an extension of our parents' patterns or whatever, mm -hmm. we know it here. But when I was in there, it was like, oh, my God, I really did marry my father twice. You know, when, um, and then I was able to do soul retrieval, bring yeah. the aspects of me that were stuck there in the pattern into me. And then I thought, if I can do this with my father, I can do it with my mother. You know, said so did the same thing. Yeah. And I had two biopsies that said I had cancer. So when I started doing this and um, when I went in again for the I had cancer surgery mm -hmm. um, because I thought I want to get on with my life and I don't want to spend so much time trying to heal it. I mean, now I would do it differently. But yeah. anyway, when I went in, not a trace of cancer was found. Oh, so wow. we can absolutely heal ourselves. Yeah. It's in the DNA. It's in all of these different systems that we're yeah. living in right now or living through.
I love and so that. then I started doing DNA work in my workshops. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the work that comes through me, everything I go through, then yeah. I learn, you know, or start healing aspects of myself. And then I know how to assist others and take others through it. Yeah. So. yeah and I think that's an important message as, as well. I know that in my own journey, everything I share, I share from my embodied experience, from what I, but I right. think it's the most beautiful ways. And it's also sometimes, again, bringing compassion to what we're going through, because in mm -hmm. the end, there's, even if it's one soul that we get to inspire with our stories, that's with our right. healing, with our, mm -hmm. it already creates again, a beautiful ripple of transformation mm -hmm. and empowerment. And so I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how how is your, oh yes, yeah. I'm sorry, what? Oh, no, I, I was curious, like, what, what, what are you currently, like, also with your son? What are you co-creating and bringing forth? Or what is the, what, what do you feel is now the most, like, for the time we're in and we're going to? What is the most? Um, well, with Frank and my team, the work we do together is really going into people's hearts mm -hmm. and opening the heart and pulling all of the lifetimes, this lifetime, beginning with this lifetime, all of the hurt and the pain and everything we've gone through. And then they go further through the heart and into the center of the soul and into the Akashic records. And some of these records are so old and worn out, they can't even be read in this lifetime, you know, from other lifetimes on the planet, other planets, wherever, you know. So then they go in and start opening that, um, the records that we are inside mm -hmm. of us. And then they just start clearing all this energy out of our whole bodies and systems. And um, yeah. and the creator has shown me that our etheric body actually has a collective DNA system that it's always, always, always matching and merging with its environment. So mm -hmm. when you have an understanding of that, yeah. we can choose what we want to match and merge with. Yes. So the work that's coming through me, the whole team, like going in and just clearing it out of the different layers of our etheric body, mm -hmm. the collective DNA, clearing that out, um, and then going for further into the heart, our old emotions, and um, again, the Akashic records, clearing it out from us and the collective. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as we do that, and then reconnect people with their higher self, mm -hmm. integrate with it, as you move out who you're not, you have more room to really download, integrate with who we really are, yeah. which is incredible. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it is. And I, in my book, um, I, I've wrote it like there's a little chapter, but that explains it in a more like sometimes also simple way. Like if, if your your body would be a bottle and the bottle is fully filled with with 3D things and thinking mm -hmm. and slower vibrations, yeah. you don't have you don't have have room for spirit to come in. But if your bottle is empty, like you're this mm -hmm. open vessel living in the now, you have more room for, mm -hmm. for spirit and your higher self mm -hmm. and your gifts and your talents to descend. So it's really, I think for all of us, as like in this mm -hmm. time and space, an invitation to to become like this pure vessel mm -hmm. or to, be, to become this stillness so that we can truly hear the messages and the guidance. And the, yeah, so I think that's beautiful. Yeah. But that also invites us to heal and to harmonize. And yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. Frank's with me. I mean, the is there a thing. message he, he would like to share, or is there something he would like to bring mm, just forward? the love? He is love. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Um, but they're talking about they want me to share again how I healed it with my mother because yes. so many people are leaving our world mm -hmm. right now. Yes. And many times we're so still so caught up in emotions with people. Mm -hmm. You know, if if we don't have the opportunity to heal it while we're here, we can still heal it from the other side. So when my son left, um, my mother and I had a very challenging relationship. Mm -hmm. But when he left, I was leaving also. I was just so heartbroken, even with what I know spiritually, you know, whatever that is. I used to think I knew a lot. And now I think I don't know anything. You know, yeah. it's just so. Yeah. Um, but I was leaving. And that morning was more in spirit my mother came and said michelle listen to me she said it's not your time to leave she said yeah. if you leave your daughters and sister will not be able to get through this mm -hmm. and my mother healed it with me from the other side yeah. and then we kept going through so much work together my mm -hmm. mother and i and i woke up one morning and just felt like my mother is my hero Mm -hmm. And I go to bed every night now, and my inner children is like with my mommy that I didn't have when she yes. was here, yeah. you know, so even if you can't heal it with someone while the, while we're on the earth, 
you can always heal it. And if we don't do it, you're going to come back again. Yes. Yeah. You know? So yeah. if you have the opportunity, mm -hmm. um, take it. Yeah. Because as you clear that, it clears all those old emotional patterns out of us also. Yes. Again, it's another level of shedding the past. Mm -hmm. So we have more room for the higher consciousness of who we are to integrate with us. Yeah, I love that. And it's so important because sometimes we can feel like if someone passes, like we don't have the completion we desired, or you, mm -hmm. maybe there was something you still wanted to share. Yeah. And and I think mm -hmm. as you shared as well, it's still, it's again, coming back to this multidimensionality. We're, we don't it stop is. by this physical lifetime. Like our, our energy mm -hmm. doesn't stop after this physical lifetime, but that's also for uh, beautiful souls in our environment passing. And it's understanding mm -hmm. that we can do this, like it's so bigger than our 3D understanding. Okay, so I love- We could even yeah. imagine. You know, yes. the more I learn, the more I know I have so much to learn, yes. you know. Yes, I yeah. can totally relate, yes. So what Spirit is saying, Frank's here, the team, it's really important that we choose what we want to match and merge with. Again, like if we are in all of the duality and the pain of the world and people research this all the time, mm -hmm. you're giving it your energy, you're giving it your life force and you're empowering it, mm -hmm. you know, so really stay connected to the highest consciousness yeah. with each other here, the masters and angels to really assist in the shift of this ascension. Mm -hmm. And I have worked with a lot of people and I've seen people that were researching all this stuff their yeah. lives are a mess. I yeah. mean, so many times they're losing everything, their health. So if you're involved in all of this duality, dark force stuff, what's going on, and it's designed to pull you into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are charged from it. Mm -hmm. And I, I work with people that, um, that, that say, Every, every moment they have, they were just researching, researching, researching. And it really affects the health. It affects your body because you're bringing that dark negative energy in to your mm -hmm. cells, the tissues, your organs. And many times it's activating old memories from other lifetimes that are mm -hmm. also being activated. Yeah. But through the ascension, our agreement is to stay connected to the highest aspects of ourself. Mm -hmm. And again, there's so much that's drawing us in to all of the duality. But when we understand that, we can we have a choice. Mm -hmm. And researching all of that, it's an addiction. Yeah. That's what people say. Like every awakened moment, all they could do was research more of mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, but it's still and, also searching outside of yourself because you keep searching there. But it's also mm -hmm. important to really become aware that everything is energy. Everything. Is, yeah. So if you're researching, you're bringing your energy there and you're communicating with that energy. So it's also influencing you. So it's really, yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. And you're you're empowering it. You're giving it your light and energy. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And what yeah. I love about this, because sometimes it can also, for some, it can feel like, okay, this is scary, but it's not. Because it's coming mm -hmm. back to this awareness that we have a choice. They're like, do I mm -hmm. choose to watch the news or not? I, I, I'm, I don't watch news for many years now because mm -hmm. I don't like, that's not the energy I want to engage in. And, and it's also like, for me, it's not my highest contribution. Because I can right. stay, if I can stay in a different frequency or help people in other ways, I can mm -hmm. be a con more contribution than, and it's understanding all of those things. Absolutely. Everything impacts us and how, mm -hmm. but again, that's coming back as well to the listening to the signals of our body. If you're watching to something or if you're doing something, do you feel excited or does it open your heart or do you feel contracted or feel like, okay, it's a little bit dense or I need to work through mm -hmm. it or I, like. Or you feel um, anger and emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. But then again, it's listening to the signals of our body. Our body has a voice and, and it really it does. is here to support yeah. us, but we need to listen <laughs> mm -hmm. again. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. I, um, I really want to take us through this little process. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much time we have left, but okay. I would love to. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go through the root up through our whole core, our body out the top of our head, our pineal gland. And as I'm talking about the pineal gland, I just see spirit opening people's pineal glands. That's why I'm waiting for a moment. So the pineal gland, I mean, many people are working with it now, is definitely our DNA connection to God, source, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to go through the pineal gland, through the new world, the new earth, 
and into what the creator is calling beyond the beyond where there's no story. We have the opportunity to rewrite our story. So as they move up there into this highest consciousness of the one cell from which we're first created, we're just going to say, Mother, Father, God, Creator. Mother, Father, God, Creator. The I am of all that is. The I am of all there is. I now set the intention. I now set the intention. And command. And command. That every cell of my body that every cell of my body, that all consciousness, that all consciousness, unconsciousness, unconsciousness, collective consciousness, collective consciousness, subconsciousness, consciousness, subconsciousness, the subconsciousness, yes. Now awakens, knows, and remembers. Now awakens, knows, and remembers that my heart is your heart. That my heart is your heart. That my mind is your mind. That my mind is your mind. All that you are, I am. All that you are, I am. And I am now safe. And I am now safe. Experience all life. Experience all life. Through the Christ, I am. Through the Christ, I am. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Of all that is. Of all there is. Just take a deep breath. And thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you. And we want to say that. Yeah. It is done. It is done. It is done. And so it is. And so it is. Hmm. And the reason we give thanks that it's done in the higher dimensions it is, mm -hmm. and we're just bringing it down here. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. It really uh, centers yourself. And I felt a lot of like goosebumps over my whole body. And it's like this expanded. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Thank you. The it's, cells. Yes. What I experience with like the cells start vibrating in the higher mm -hmm. consciousness of ourself. Yeah. So what I suggest is start your day like this. Mm -hmm end your day like this really was spirit um in the highest consciousness of who you are thank you thank you for sharing this gift for sharing your light and your amazing energy and i would say if you would like to know how you can work with michelle you can find her information below this video or audio and her links so i would say check it out and i really yeah again thank you for what you're bringing forward in the world and your own journey and how you that get to uh, share from this embodied state. So uh, thank you. Mm, thank you so much. If there was Probably one last message you would here. like to share, is there one last sentence or an empowering word? Just really knowing that you are what you've been looking for, that we are the highest consciousness of God creation, whatever, whatever you want to call God to be. Um, that you are home. This is our home now really co-creating i mean heaven on earth or really moving into the highest aspects of ourselves here and spirit is really showing us that um although we're going through a lot right now in the world um on the higher dimensions we're already there mm -hmm. so to really move out of the fear that's happening here because that fear is lifetimes of it multiple yes. you know consciousness that's moving up and out right now mm -hmm. and really stay connected to the highest aspects of ourselves that we've got it yes yes <laughs> out of the fear and into the highest consciousness yeah. i love that yes we are already home and we've got this i we do have that. yeah thank you right so I also you. want to, yes, thank you. Thank you everyone tuning in and connecting. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next Soul Love podcast. And for the rest, just stay in love and feel all the beautiful keys that you received from this. And uh, see you next time. Much love. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining this episode of Soul Love. If you want to find out more about what we do, you can find it below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Much love.